Hi everyone, welcome to Tuesday with Tammy. I'm Tammy from the blog Nutmeg Notebook and this is Tuesday Hi. with Tammy and my husband Tom and we teach people how to cook on a whole food plant-based no oil lifestyle. So if you haven't visited the blog yet, hop on over after the video to nutmegnotebook.com be sure to become a subscriber because when you subscribe, you get two exclusive recipes that are just for subscribers. And make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel as well and click that little bell that's next to the subscribe tab because that's how you get notifications whenever we go live or whenever we have a new video up. So today we want to talk to you all about air frying. So we love our air fryers and we use them all the time. They are fantastic, especially for a no oil diet because even though we don't eat oil anymore, we still like crispy, crunchy food. And the air fryer does a beautiful job of helping us create those things that we miss a little bit. So we're gonna talk to you about two different air fryers today and they couldn't be more opposite or at the opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to air fryers. So we have the Breville Smart Oven Air, which has a very large capacity, and we love it. And we also have this Milfy Crisp Lid, which turns your six or eight quart pressure cooker into an air fryer. Isn't that incredible? So it's really neat. So we're gonna talk about the Milfy first, and then we're gonna move on to the Breville because that one we have a little more to say about. And I do want to let you know that the Milfy company did send us this crisp lid to try and a few months ago and we tried it and we loved it. And we also got a, one of their, their pressure cookers, it's called a multi-pot and it works like most electric pressure cookers and we love it, so we decided to become affiliates with them, so just so you know. And we do have a discount code with them, so listen and I'll give you that discount code too at the, at the end of this presentation. So on the Milfy Crisp Lid, your pressure cooker has to have a stainless steel liner. So if you have one that has the Teflon liner, this will not work with it because it gets up to too high of a temperature that would not be safe for the Teflon coating. I do have an old pressure cooker that has a Teflon lining, so I would not be able to use it. But you can use this on any brand of pressure cooker, electric pressure cooker that has the stainless steel liner. And just know you are not even going to be plugging the pressure cooker in. You are only going to be plugging in the Milfy Crisp Lid. So what do you get when you order it? So you're gonna get a really nice pair of tongs for getting the food in and out. You're going to get a nice silicone trivet, hot pad, if you will, to go on your countertop. Then you also are getting the crisp lid, and this is what it looks like. It has a high-powered fan in here and a heating element, and it is glass. So this is really great uh, for people who don't have large kitchens or just don't want a lot of accessories in their kitchen. Then it also comes with the little frying basket, and it has this little handle on it so that you can use the tongs, as you can see, to get it in and out safely. Then it also comes with this elevated trivet that goes down inside your stainless steel liner in order to get the basket closer to the top where the heating element is for the crisp lid. And then you just put the crisp lid on. And like I said, it will fit either a six quart or an eight quart, it's adaptable to either one. This happens to be the eight quart and you can see that the lid fits perfect on it. I also use it on my six quart and it's great. So this is wonderful for people who live in, who travel a lot, who have RVs and travel in their RV but they still want to be able to have air fry function when they're traveling. It's great to take with you on vacation if you're going on a road trip because it doesn't take up a lot of room. We like to take our six quart pressure cookers with us 
pressure cooker, we only take one pressure cooker with us when we travel um, by, by car because we can cook in our hotel room or we try to book Airbnbs. And we did a whole video all about how to travel and eat healthy. So if you're gonna be traveling for the holidays, you might wanna look at that because we have a lot of great ideas that we have come up with just from our own experiences. And if you just don't have a lot of room in your kitchen or you don't want to invest in a larger um, air fryer, this is a great alternative. And sometimes we have both of ours going because sometimes Tom will be making chips, for instance. He loves to make his own baked chips in the air fryer. I guess they're not baked, they're air fried. And sometimes he'll be doing that in the breville, but I've decided that, you know, I want some potatoes air fried. So we can both be air frying at the same time. It doesn't matter that, you know, we're gonna do two different things, different temperatures, because I'll just get out an instant pot or a milky multi-cooker and my um, crisp lid, and I will go ahead and make up my potatoes at the same time that he's making chips. So it works great. So this is wonderful. You can just, all you do is use the top and you set your temperature. I do most things in the air fryer at 400 degrees, and then you set the time. I do most things at 20 minutes, believe it or not. And then you just press the go, and the light comes on. And what you will notice about this is that it comes on and it goes off, and that's how it regulates the temperature. And then they give you this great little, I'm gonna shut it off because we don't need it going. Then they give you this great little um, silicone trivet so that you can take it off and have a safe place to set it because that is going to be very hot. And so then you will just set it on the little silicone mat and keep your countertop nice and safe. So I do, mostly I do potatoes in it. Sometimes I'll do my whole meal in it. I will do like corn on the cob and a frozen veggie burger that I've made ahead and frozen, and then some potatoes. Or I'll do, and that'll be my meal. Or I might do these crispy potatoes. We call these our uh, smashed potatoes. We have a video on how to make these. Or I'll do a whole basket full of the smashed potatoes to go along with what I'm eating. Or I will make the Japanese sweet potato croutons, and I have a video on that too on how to make those. And I'll make those and I'll put those on top of my salad. And they taste wonderful. They're so nice and crispy. So this is great for air frying for one or two people because as you can see, it's a small quantity that you can do. And Milthy was getting a lot of requests from people for a larger basket. And so they actually now have come up with a basket that you can see is deeper so it will hold more volume. And so if you wanted to do a larger batch of fries or Brussels sprouts, or um, I'm not sure what else, you broccoli, mean, you could do a lot more broccoli and you, it won't. If you had a bunch of larger broccoli heads. That the, would the, work the really well the, for that. With the deeper one is, if you're gonna put more volume in there, then you may you, wind then up you'll needing have to, to stir. Yeah, if uh, you, you will have to either stir or you might have to um, you know, shake the basket a little bit, use a trivet and shake the basket. But we've been very happy with the crisp lid. It works very nicely. Some things actually cook faster in it because it's a smaller space and it's very close to the heating element. So a lot of times the potatoes will cook faster for me using the milky than they do in the Breville Smart Oven Air. So if you want to order this, you order directly from the factory and you can use our discount code. So you would go to milthy.com and place your order and at checkout, as long as your order is $59.95 or more, then you can use our code Nutmeg Notebook. There's no break between Nutmeg Notebook. It's spell it out like it's all one word and you will get $10 off. So, and that works on the, um, if you want to order one of their multi-pots as well. So we've been very happy with their products and that's why we can highly recommend them. So I, I made the Brussels sprouts in this right before we 
and started shooting today and you can see they turned out really nice and crisp and you can do them as long as you want, make them as dark as you want. I don't like things to get like super dark, so I still want them to have a little bit of freshness. I don't want the water that's in them to completely evaporate, so I kind of like them just like that. I don't put any sauce on them before I cook them. I like them just plain, but you can certainly add afterwards, you could add seasonings or vinegar or mustard or whatever you like on those, but I've just kind of gotten to the point where I like things to be a little more plain. And the Brussels sprouts are great, and I will do large batches in my Breville Smart of an Air, which we're gonna show you in a minute, and then put them in a container and have them all week. I like to add them to my salads. I like, I sometimes, I just like to eat them cold as a snack. You know, sometimes I will reheat them either in the air fryer or I will reheat them in the microwave. And I know some people don't think that microwaves are safe and that's a personal choice, but if you go to Dr. Greger's website, nutritionfacts.org, he has videos all about microwaves and he says that the microwaves are safe. He also says that air frying the food is safe. Uh, some people are worried about the crispy edges. It's really not a problem when you're not using oil and you're not do eating animal products. It's the oil and it's the animal products. That accelerate the whole acryl acrylamide, acrylamide question. And then mm -hmm. a number of the doctors, whether it's Dr. Esselton or Dr. Gerger, the best way to cook your, your uh, Brussels sprouts or your uh, uh, cauliflower or your your greens whatever they may be is however you will eat them yes because so, it would be better for you to eat, eat them, them cooked anyway that's right. than to not eat them at all yeah so he addresses both the acrylamines for vegetables as well as the safety of using the microwave oven so tom i'm going to move this if you want to bring oh. in the um okay all right, I'm gonna, before I move it though, I was gonna, I'm gonna shift the camera left a little bit for you guys, because we've been getting a lot of questions about the space requirements around the Breville. Um, yeah, so. that's why we're doing this video today, is because we've been getting so many questions about both of the air fryers. So we thought, okay, rather than ans answering all these people individually, let's just do a video and get everyone answered at once. And then we also have a resource later on for people yeah. who okay. ask us later. So, so let me move these out of the right. way. And then everybody else hang on for a short ride here. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking you far. Hopefully not too far. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, I can see it there. All Looking right. good. And my, is my head cut off in the, I'm a little bit cut off. Just a little bit. I'll. I'll just You're going to fix it? Go ahead. I'll try to fix just it. Just move it up. Okay. So, I'm not usually behind the camera. I just shift it up slightly. I can see what you're doing over here. A um, couple of notes on this. When you get this, when you get the instruction book from the factory, they're talking about four inches of clearance on, on the, both sides of the rubble and behind it, uh, if possible, as well. And then they like six inches on top. And we actually do have that here in, the, in this location on our counter. But as we've done several videos that use the Breville, uh, people have noticed that I've got it over to the left and in back. We are able to get it. That's a choice we're making here locally because this is a stone sidewall here. This is a half inch thick of marble. And the back is a half inch uh, thick piece of marble. And on the right hand side, now we have like 10 inches, but it's a metal side of our refrigerator. So. Um, and then we do have the regulation clearance, I believe it's six inches above this. A uh, recent question I got was about the heat rising from the oven. It does roll on out of here. It's, it's not, in my opinion, excessive. There is a fluorescent light up here and it actually creates more heat on the cabinet surface and on itself than we get off of the Breville. Um, another thing we do do is we keep the board the cutting board that we got from Breville that fits uh, exactly on top this is the model bov 900 and this board has a 900 in its order code there's several sizes of cutting boards and uh, a number of people were getting ones that were smaller so if you want this one you have to uh, actually i put a link on the description 
that will give you the exact model number of this particular board. But we keep it up here because it's really handy when we're switching things around to just pop a tray up on there. If this was bare metal, we'd be scratching the top and, and making a bunch of noise. But as we're changing trays in and out, we're always using this board as a staging area for whatever's coming and going out of the oven. And sometimes so. I like to put like my platter or my plate up on there while I'm cooking because there's heat rising and it just kind of takes the chill off the plate yeah. and warms it a little bit. And did you tell them what the model number is? Because people are always asking us, what model Well, the first is part it? of it is BOV900, but the link is already in the description. And so if you click on that, it will take you to, even if you're getting it at Bed Bath & Beyond, because uh, they, they have uh, uh, sales that come and go, mm -hmm. um, you can get the model number and all the dimensions or stuff are listed as you scroll down in Amazon. All of that information is in the description on Amazon if you're looking to see if it will fit in a space. But it does uh, need to say Breville Smart Oven Air, Air. because they only have one of the Breville Smart Ovens that's also an air, air fryer. fryer. So that's what you're looking for. And the mistake that I made the first time that Tammy sent me to the store is I came home with a Breville Smart Oven, not the air. And I took it back and had to buy the right one. So, I mean... Guilty. It happens to, it happens to all of us. <laughs> so the last thing I'm doing with this oven in this location is I bought for Tammy and, and myself this thing called a hug a plug and what that allows is this, this plug to come out sideways from the outlet because if it was coming straight out it would be pushing up against the hot metal on the back of the oven so I do have this on the web page because this just keeps the cord management easier makes more space behind it and you don't have the smell of hot plastic coming out at you from from using your oven so, well, do you want to leave it there or do you want to move it? No, I'm going to... You're going to move it. Because you're going to be going over all the inside stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where's that cord winding up? So I'm going to have to come around to the camera and reposition the camera to fit however this is sitting. Okay. I'll plug it in so that when I open it, we've got the light. Perfect. Okay. There was no easy way to figure out how to do this part, you guys. So that is just beeping at us, telling us that it's... It has turned itself on. Okay, so, you guys hang on for a ride again. Wait for us, Tammy. Okay. And I was busy um, getting rid of trolls. So while you were talking, Tom. Were you able so, to get them? Yeah. Did you tell them everything that it comes with? No, I haven't gone over anything on okay. the inside. Okay, great. Then I'll do, I'll do that part. Am I in the, am I in the video? Um, let's bring this a little bit more your way. Okay. Are you going to stand on that side? For a minute or two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and you got that stuff behind you too to I reference. Do. And so you won't, I be do. you won't be leaving the picture to grab that. Okay. I'll adjust as we need to. Yeah, it's still a little bit warm. So Tom made chips before it. So I just want you guys to know we use this thing every day. We love it. Oh, and AJ, I saw that you said hi on there. Hi back at you. Are you home from the Remedy conference already? Uh, I was thinking about you today. So we love it. We use it every day. It, it's an oven. It is a broiler. It's a dehydrator. I haven't av actually used the dehydrator function because I have a nine tray Excalibur dehydrator, so I haven't needed it. But if you want a dehydrator, this is it too. So it's uh, it does roasting, broiling, it does proofing if you like make your own dough. Sometimes Tom will have a, a whole wheat crust and he will use the proofing for his pizza dough crust. Um, boy, you haven't done that in a long time though. And y there's just so much you can do with it. Plus it's an air fryer, which is just amazing. So it also comes with a two year warranty which is really good to know and they are very good about standing behind their products and because it's a higher end product you do get a two-year warranty so a lot of people don't realize that so what you're going to get with it is you're going to get one of these racks and it actually does not come with this black liner and i'll talk about that in a minute so this is for dehydrating as well as for air frying. And it just comes with one rack for that. So you have that. It also comes with a no stick pizza pan. So you can see, I think it's a 13 inch pizza pan that fits in here, which is really great. 
And then you also get a broiler pan, which we've actually never used it, but, and it also comes with the little wire rack to sit on top of it. But you know, you could use this for baking potatoes in as well. And then it also comes with one baking rack. And, whoa, sorry guys, that was really loud. Now we gotta get this in here just right. So that's what you're going to get. That's what comes with it standard, which is really nice. It's a lot of nice accessories. Now it says right on here, you're not gonna be able to see it there at home, but it says do not use with foods that drip while cooking because they don't want you having stuff drip down on the little um, heating element bars that are in the bottom. And so- Mushroom, Mushrooms are about the worst drippy thing you have yeah, done. The, I did the little mini sweet bell peppers, or the mini, I guess they're not bell peppers, but the little mini sweet peppers in at one time and that was a huge mess and so I did not do those again because you know the, it dripped on the little heating element bars in the bottom and I had to scrub those really good to get all the burnt on stuff off of there and so and I find that they're just as delicious when cooked on roast or just make them in the oven instead of doing them on the air frying mode they're just as sweet they come out pretty much the same the peppers do because they just have too much moisture so I do some mushrooms I'll put fresh mushrooms in it and those do ooze just a little bit but it's not sticky and messy like the peppers were so so keep that in mind then I'm going to show you oh I wanted to show you the crumb tray oh a question that came up earlier and you may have covered it it does make toast Yes, it'll do nine <laughs> slices of toast. It is, it's like a... So, I don't, I, I don't, you know, I'm gluten-free. I don't do bread anymore. But it will do nine slices of toast as well. So, yes, I, here's, you have toast, bagel, broil, bake, roast, warm, pizza proof, air fry. There's a reheat cycle. There's a cycle for cooking cookies. There's a slow cook cycle because it will hold a five quart Dutch oven, and then you can put it on slow cook and it will work like a slow cooker, but it's just you're using your Breville Smart Oven instead. And it also has the dehydrate, so you can use it as a dehydrator. You can, you can purchase extra trays too, so that you can you know, do multiple trays of, for dehydrating. Then I uh, want to show you. What, uh, also, are you gonna cover parchment paper, using parchment paper in there? Sure. Okay. And then this is the crumb tray that comes out and um, things will drip on this sometimes like the sweet potatoes sometimes when i'm air frying those they will drip a little bit if they're very juicy and i have no problem getting this clean so as soon as it's cool enough that i can safely take it out i run hot soapy water in my sink and then i drop it down into the hot soapy water as well as with the racks. And I'll drop those down in the hot soapy water. I'll let them soak a bit and then they clean up really well. And I'll show you a couple products that I use for that. So, and I mean, this sometimes gets really dirty looking and you think, oh my gosh, how am I ever gonna get that off? But because it's all natural, it's all plant matter, it cleans off really easily. It would probably be a different story if I was using oil or cooking animal products in it that had a high amount of fat, but it actually cleans up really nicely, as you can see. And so I wash that whenever I make something that gets a little dirty because the next time you go to use it, you're gonna create more heat and then whatever's stuck on there is really gonna get burnt on. So it's a good idea just to wash it. It only takes a couple minutes. It doesn't have to soak very long. Just, you know, a few minutes in the hot soapy water and that comes super clean. So then I wanna show you, Tom talked a little bit about the accessories that we did buy. So I do love having the bamboo cutting board for the top of it. And um, I have a friend whose husband made her one to fit on top of hers. So that was really cool. If you have a husband that's handy or wants to do stuff like that, so that's a great idea. Then we also got 
the grill mitt muffins, muffins, gloves. I have muffins on the brain, I guess. There is a muffin so, pan lurking behind There you. is. I know. My brain's just going crazy. Are you snacking? What? He's snacking. <laughs> you guys, he's over there snacking. No one so, saw that. I think it's really important to have some gloves for this rather than pot holders because when you're using the air fry function, sometimes I will put multiple items on my tray and they cook at, for different lengths of, of time. Everything that I put on, it's going to cook at the same temperature, 400 degrees, but I might need to pull it out after 10 minutes. Let's say I have the potatoes on it. Then I might pull it out after 10 minutes and add broccoli and mushrooms because I only do those for about 10 minutes. And so I don't want to get my hand burned, you know, going in and out of the air fryer because the burner is on. And so I really like having the gloves for that instead of using a pot holder because my whole hand is protected that way. So that was one thing that I learned by using it and I really like those, yeah. A question I think that came up from the, maybe from the pizza pan uh, on, I had, it, I had it just in front of me. Uh, this is from Yvette. Do you know if the nonstick pans have any toxins? What's it made of? The, whether it's th these pans or, or the, lining, the lining in, in, in the milky frying pan that we have yet to do a video on or the liners in a rice cooker, there's two chemical names that are of concern in the market today uh, that goes back a decade or two, uh, PFOA and PFE. And I have them stirred in my head uh, right now, but it's important that they're free of the one of those that is bad. And I've talked to a couple of different factories and they've st stated that their nonstick coatings are, uh, I believe they are you know, PFOA free. Um, so it is a nonstick, I think what we generically call a Teflon coating. But you know, my mom's Teflon pans were a problem and that's where a lot of the science originally came up with concerns. But modern day nonstick coatings have used processes that are getting away from having a release of those toxic chemicals at the prescribed temperatures that we're cooking with them. I have that in there, cook it. So, so I would go to the Breville uh, factory website mm -hmm. and look and see if you can find the answer to that. And if not, I would call their customer service because they have excellent customer service and I'm sure that they can yeah. answer your questions yeah. regarding yeah. that. Yeah, the grill tray is more of a ceramic coating. It's not, that's not a non-stick. That's just a no, ceramic it, coating. It, right. And then, and this is, that's, this a, whole, that's a type of non-stick. The it, whole thing is made of this, the top and the bottom. It's all the same. And it's not like, it's not like a Teflon pan, so I'm not sure what yeah. it is. And I don't know, I've never used it, but Tom has, Tom has used it. Okay, so get you some gloves, and we do have those on our Amazon page as well. And then I wanna show you what else we got to go with this. So we did contact the factory when we got it, and we, uh, wanted to get another of the um, dehydrator air frying trays. And so we were able to buy that directly from them. And um, somebody told me that you can also get them from um, William Sonoma has them. But I did go on their website today and I didn't see them on there because I was going to see uh, about getting those for you guys. But I didn't see them on their website, but maybe you can call them and see, but you can get them from Breville themselves. And they told us when Tom called to order them, they told us that you shouldn't try to do more than two trays when you're using the air fry function because it's just not going to work to do more than two trays. And then you also need to rotate the trays halfway through um, the cooking time because it does affect how they cook, having them stacked. And then we've also noticed, like when Tom makes the chips, if he makes two racks of chips, it creates a lot of moisture in there. And so after how many minutes do you open the door? About four or five minutes into it, I'll drop the door open. And because it's a cooler piece of, you know, glass on there, the moisture mm -hmm. collects on it. I take a towel and, and wipe it real quick. And then 
cleans the glass really nice, like a steam cleaning, and it removes the excess moisture. And I think that's kind of a hair split. I think I'm getting crispier chips in the process, and, and I'm getting a clean door. And so then Tammy's happy, and I'm happy, and everything's clean and crispy. There so, you go. Did you know that Chef AJ is watching today? Yeah, I already said hi oh, to I her. I was focused you on something that. else. Okay, okay so um, after we had purchased this and our friend Shada was here and she liked it so much, we played around with the Breville Smart of an Air and she went home and bought it. And then she let me know that she bought these little mats to put over the trays just to help things not get stuck to the trays because the trays are made of wire and they're just a little bit hard to clean. And so I'll show you what she bought originally and told us about. It's these crispy cooker mats and we have these on our Amazon page and you just have to cut them to fit. Well, they're always running out of these on Amazon and people are t always telling us, oh, I can't get those, they're out. And so then Tom found these that are very similar. They're called grill mesh mats. Don't look at the meat. They're called grill mesh mats. And you get three of them in the package. And then you just cut them to fit the little um, trays. So you just have to cut the edges a little bit to fit. And we have found that it really helps keep the food from sticking. It makes the cleanup much easier, the racks stay a lot cleaner, and these, you know, we just, again, I put these in the hot soapy water. When they get cool enough that I can safely remove them from the oven, I'll put them in the sink full of hot soapy water, and I'll just let them soak for, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then they clean up really nicely. And I will use one of these Scotch-Brite non-scratch sponges that has the little blue scrubby surface on it that works really well. I, I use that just to get it nice and clean. And on the, um, on the crumb tray, the bottom crumb tray, I will use a little, I'll use the Scotch-Brite scrubber and I'll use some barkeeper's friend if something gets kind of burnt on that won't come off, you know, completely with the soap. I'll just sprinkle a little bit of this on there. You could probably also use baking soda if you don't want to use the barkeeper's friend, but barkeeper's friend. Yeah, this friend, is a piece that comes out of the oven, uh, so yeah. you can thoroughly rinse off the residue you from that. You can thoroughly rinse it. So you use this and then you can use soap and water and get it completely clean. It's just that little bit of abrasion that this has seems to help remove something, but you know, baking, a baking soda and water paste might also work. And then the other thing that I have found to be good for cleaning this up are these Mr. Clean Magic Erasers, which these things are amazing. They really are magic. So I use these all over the house for a variety of things, but these work really well too. And I got these at Costco. So they have them um, extra durable kitchen and for the bath. And then recently I saw they have these little magic eraser sheets that are also supposed to be really great. Did, so did, in the manual, it does tell you not to put anything on the crumb tray. You do not want to put aluminum foil on it. You do not want to put parchment paper down there. You do not want a layer of silicone down there. That will void your warranty for one thing. And if I, they- I think part of what they're doing there is they don't want a foreign material in there inadvertently uh, blocking the nooks and crannies because when we are using this, Tammy described earlier on the uh, uh, air frying or making the, the chips, that there's, it, in the beginning of the cycle, there's quite a bit of, of steam moisture mm -hmm. rolling out of the lower seam and the side seams of the door. But if you've got a piece of foil in there blocking that, that air escape, um, then you're going to be upsetting the, you know, the airflow of the system because there's a gradual air turnover to drive that moisture out of the unit. Um, so I would agree that putting something on the bottom can disrupt, you know, what they're doing with the airflow and air escape. Yeah. Because they're and not so circulating the same air around and around. They're gradually putting in always a little bit more fresh air to drive the moisture out. So we also do not, we do not use parchment paper on the racks either because we want the air to be able to come through. That's why this is made like a basket so that the air can come through. And you also, you wanna make sure that you have the super convection 
setting turned on when you're using the air fryer because that is an increased amount of airflow that's going and that's what helps make everything crispy quickly and without using any oil. So we use this all summer long. We live here in Northern California and it gets really hot here in the summer. And because this is a smaller uh, space, it heats up the preheat only takes a few minutes and it reaches temperature and it cooks everything. I mean, you can bake potatoes in it, you can do everything in it and it doesn't heat up our kitchen and make our air conditioner have to run harder. Another thing that I love about it is that it holds a nine by 13 pan. So let me show you. While you're getting that, did you, did you talk about uh, acquiring extra air frying trays at all? Yes, I said that we got ours from Breville. Okay. And some people have said that they've gotten them from Williams Sonoma, but I, I already told them I went well, on there today. Well, I want to make them. a comment about the the vagaries of pricing on the trays. I've noticed that there's a huge spread of pricing. I think there's some gougers that uh, vendors that uh, buy them, and then when that, nobody else has them, they charge quite a price for them. So do shop around when you're look on, looking on those. There's a set of three that that Breville does sell. Sometimes on Amazon, there's sellers that have the price really uh, raised up high. So don't just assume the one thing you're looking at is, is how much they are. There's There are reasonable prices for them, but you just got to buy them, you know, look around and buy them at the right place. Breville. Yeah. Well, or, we bought ours directly from Breville, and I can't remember how much they were, but it was, a, did we get two extra? Did, was that how it came? Yeah, I two think, extra? I think Maybe they were like was. 20 bucks a piece. I think we paid 40 something to get a couple more or something I like that. I don't remember. But I've seen just all over the place the okay. pricing on the, on the so trays. So see how this is a 9 by 13 casserole dish. You just need to make sure you have one that doesn't have crazy um, handles on it that stick way out. But see how it'll hold a 9 by 13. So I love it. So the shepherd's lentil shepherd's pie that i just posted that recipe for it fits in here beautifully in the 9 by 13 and then also here is my 12 cup muffin pan and that fits in here isn't that great so i can do my quinoa banana oat muffins in here absolutely no problem and then i bought a jelly roll pan that also fits in here this is an OXO, it's 10 by 15, and you can see how great that fits in there too. So I'll use that. So, so in terms of a return on investment, there's a lot of ovens that are not quite as big as this one mm -hmm. for $100 less or maybe even $200 less. Uh, but this one has 10 times the, you know, you, we use it 10 times more than we could any of those others. So we get far more use out of this one because of the latitude it gives us with its size, um, which is yeah, why- Yeah, I love it. Our daughter has just the regular Breville Smart Oven, not the Air, and so it's a little bit smaller than this. And for a couple of years, she had been telling me, Mom, you should really get that toaster oven. It's so amazing. Even though she has a full-size oven, you know, she goes and uses this all the time. And so then when we finally got the smart of an air, I was like, oh my gosh, you were so right. I absolutely love a toaster oven. I had never had a toaster oven before. So even though it takes up quite a bit of space, after Tom had done his research, we had it narrowed down to two. It was between getting the Breville smart oven air or getting the Phillips air fryer, which is a standalone, just an air fryer. And I think it was a five quart. We actually, we ordered it and it came and then he went to Bed Bath & Beyond because we were still on the fence, like which one do we want to get? And I wasn't sure I wanted to give up the counter space for this, but he brought it home and we sat it in that spot. And I thought, well, you know, I really don't use that for anything that's critical. And boy, am I so glad that we decided to go with it because you know, I, on batch cooking day, I will use my big ovens if I need to cook a lot of potatoes. But if I just need, you know, a half a dozen or so, I'll just go ahead and use the Breville because I don't have to wait for that oven to heat up. And we just, we love it. It's, it's great. Julie so, was asking on right here at while we're on the subject, how would you compare what you used to do in the convection oven in terms of your air frying or the Brussels sprouts here compared to what we can do in this? Yeah, so I have some of those. I'll grab those little mesh. Um, 
Oh, the oven mesh the trays. The oven mesh trays. And I'll Which show is what you we were using before we got an air fryer. Uh, we used them for a while before we got the air fryer. Yeah, and these I think we got from QVC. I'm sorry, you guys. I know I've been. Oh, uh, we can still see you. And You're I've been the... making. <laughs> I know. And I've been. And I've been making so much noise. So much noise. So before we had the air fryer, I had these mats and I can't remember what these are called at the moment and but I got them from QVC and I don't know if they still have them or not and so I would use these to make the french fries in the convection oven and you know it did a pretty good job actually it really did they did not get as crispy as the ones in the air fryer it's just different so I don't know it's kind of like the difference between like steaming some corn on the cob or some vegetables and grilling them. You know how grilling the vegetables just gives them so much more flavor? Pizzazz. Yes, and it's the same way with the air fryer. It just changes the flavor. It's a different type of cooking method and it's, it's fast and it's hot and it's that circulating air and it just makes them taste I think different. the speed allows the outside to crisp up to the level that we want without dehydrating or drying out the inside. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's kind of a flash cooking kind of a concept. So I think that's kind of, you know, like the sweet potatoes, they're sweet yeah. and moist on the inside and crispy and crunchy on the outside. And I think that's harder to do in a conventional oven, even mm -hmm. in, the, in the... Well, and I, so I was recently staying with my parents for a week and you know how I started making the Japanese sweet potato croutons and I absolutely love those. So I wanted to make that salad for my parents and they don't have an air fryer. So I did them under the broiler and the broiler did a pretty good job. It's not the same because although they got crispy on the top, the bottom of them didn't get crispy and the skin on the bottom didn't get crispy like it does in the air fryer. So if I you know, I probably would have thought that they were great if I'd never had the air fryer and experienced how it can make them and have them crispy all around. And like Tom said, it doesn't dry out the inside. The inside is still moist and delicious because it has of that fast heat. So I so it does a much better job than and I have a convection oven as well. We paid a lot of money for that convection oven, but I prefer this. So if we use a kind I, of a slow, con when we're bake, batch prepping potatoes, we do use the convention function because it's slowly moving that air on there. So we, we get do. even cooking on, mm -hmm. on, on a, you know, three huge trays of potatoes. So, yes. so we do still use that convection for our conventional uh, oven use. Yeah. Yes. So I wanted to show you the things that we make in the air fryer the most. And probably the, the two things that we do most are potatoes, all different kinds of potatoes and Tom's chips. And so these are just corn tortillas that he cuts and air fries. And we have a video all about that. And he shows you exactly, like if you have the Breville Smart Oven Air, he shows you exactly how to put them on the trays and in order to maximize the space and do that. And then there's also a delicious salsa recipe on that. So then sweet potatoes. I absolutely love sweet potatoes. My favorite are the Japanese sweet potatoes. So I have a video all about potatoes, all different kinds of potatoes and how I bake them. So make sure you watch that. So I batch prep my potatoes. We bake them for the week. They usually last the week. We usually don't run out unless we've had, unless we have unexpected company. And what I like to do is I like to take the cold already baked sweet potatoes and then cut them in half. And people ask, why do you cook them again? Well, you don't have an air fryer if you're asking that question because they are so incredibly delicious, even more than you can imagine when you cook them a second time. So these I like to score. I go diagonally one way and then diagonally the other way. And I like to air fry them. 400 degrees, I don't preheat the air fryer. Ever. I just don't. 
and I put them in the air fryer and I set the timer for 20 minutes. But I watch them because sometimes it must have to do with how much moisture is in them. Sometimes they're done a few minutes before and sometimes they're not quite done enough and so I air fry them a little bit longer. That it, They are so delicious. All of the natural sugars that are in the sweet potato seem to come to the surface they get kind of caramelized and they're even sweeter than they were before you cooked them the second time. And then these are the little croutons that I like to make. So I just cut them up into pieces. Again, it's a, it's a sticky because all of the sugar has come and it, they're kind of sticky. And so then I just do a whole tray of the little chunks of already cooked Japanese sweet potato. Again, 400 degrees, a cold oven, about 20 minutes. Then these are the smashed potatoes. These are the little tiny Yukon gold potatoes. I just scrub them really good. Again, I bake them, put them in the refrigerator to chill, and then we have a whole video on how to make these. It's called smashed potatoes, and we like these better than oh, French Deborah rice. Oh, Deborah Tin has them right now. She's making them. Are they oh. done yet? <laughs> I'm ready. And they are so good, and they are so much better than french fries. We absolutely love them. They get all crispy and crunchy, and if you have a little bit of homemade ketchup, they're just amazing. So I do a Japanese sweet potato every day. I have one every day because I just love them. I love them on my salad. If you, if you want a dessert, this is an incredible dessert. You can just sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on it before or after air frying it and it becomes an absolutely delicious dessert. You can do a whole tray of these. Do them for Thanksgiving, you guys, because they are so incredibly delicious. And if your relatives or friends who are coming over, if they have never had Japanese sweet potatoes or Hannah yams, they will just go crazy for them because they are super delicious and it's something maybe a little bit different and unique. And then, of course, we love vegetables in the air fryer. So today what I made were, these are zucchini and yellow squash, you know that big bag that you can buy at Costco or even Sam's Club has them and they're organic. And I just sliced them up and then put them in the air fryer, 400 degrees. I did these for about, I think about 30 minutes and they're really delicious. It completely changes the flavor of them. It takes you know, the humble little zucchini and turns it into something gourmet and you don't even need seasoning. But if you choose, you could drizzle a little bit of vinegar, flavored vinegar, balsamic vinegar on them. Broccoli, I like to do the broccoli for 10 minutes. I like to do my mushrooms. These are just the little uh, portabella. Baby mini, portabellas. Yeah, baby portabellas. We buy those at Costco and I do those for 10 minutes. And then the Brussels sprouts, I did for about 20 minutes and I did those in the, um, the milky because I had run out of room, you know? And so then it was like, oh, I've got one more thing to do. I'll just pop those in my milky. And we just love them. The flavor is amazing. And if you want to batch prep, I will also batch prep. You can do corn on the cob. I mean, there's just asparagus, all kinds of things that you can do. Yes, you have a uh, question. Um, uh, Kathy Salish found those that are called crispies. Crisp ease trays. That's right, crisp ease and, trays. And thank you, Kathy. And I did go ahead and if somebody wants to go that direction, I dropped them in the description so you can look them up on Amazon and see what they are and how much they are. Yes, and so if you don't have an air fryer, don't have space for an air fryer or it doesn't fit in your budget right now, then do get these because you can make really delicious uh, French fries in a regular oven or a convection oven with those. So. So we love to do um, veggie burgers. You can do veggie burgers in this. So I make up my veggie burgers and make them up ahead of time and freeze them. And AJ has a great one for um, no bean, beanless, no, beanless burgers in her Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss book. And we love those. They're, they, oh, they're so incredible and different from anything you've ever had. Well, I like to take those and shape those into balls and then air fry them. They are so delicious. I will also make some into patties 
and freeze them and then to reheat them, I like to reheat them in the air fryer because it gets them all nice and crisp on the outside. And I should tell you that I do go ahead and pre um, cook them before I freeze them. And I know AJ likes to make them in the oven, but I prefer to do them in my scan pan on the stove top and get a nice brown little crust on For new people, she's referring, for new folks, she's referring to Chef AJ. Yeah, I said Chef AJ, didn't I? No, you've just, you've just been oh, saying just it. AJ. You've been oh. skipping the chef. Okay, sorry. She worked hard for that. We got to give her her chef. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, chef anyway, AJ. if you have the Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss book, which I highly recommend, it has over 100 recipes in it, and I'm going to have to order a new copy because I have food splatters all over mine because I use it constantly. Doesn't that increase its nutritional value <laughs> over does. time? It does. It does. But anyway... So it's delicious for that too. And so we use it a lot for reheating because I love to batch cook. And if you've watched us for very long, you know that we, once or twice a week, we make a ton of food to get us through the week. And people are always asking, how do you reheat all that stuff? In the air fryer for one, we love it. And we also use our microwave, but we do like the texture and the consistency of using the air fryer because it heats things up but doesn't make them soft and mushy. It will help you keep them crisp. So if I make too many potatoes and can't eat them all, then I'll just put them in a covered container in the refrigerator and when I go to reheat them to eat them, then I'll just pop them in the air fryer. And it might only take like five minutes because they're, they're already pretty brown and I just need to crisp them up a little bit. So it also works great for leftovers. Okay, I feel like I've been. That's true. How are you doing on your <laughs> notes? How are you doing okay, on your I'll notes? Okay, I'll check my notes. Do you have any other questions? Uh, one that I, I was holding from earlier, and you may have covered this while I was reading on some other, okay. uh, doing some other things here. Um, we, I know we've never done it, but on the on the crispy cooker mats, uh, someone wanted to air fry soy curls. You know, prepared soy curls, but and, and put them in the air fryer to crisp them up and then that kind of leaves a big mess on the mat. So did it, how, how are you doing? Did you cover putting the mats and soaking them in the sink and scrubbing I them? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so, so are you putting yeah. a batter on the soy curls? Is, is that why it's making I a mess? I think if you have the marinade or something. So I have, um, our family likes the soy curls. So, you know, I'll make a dish a couple times a year for them using the soy curls and then I usually use the um, jackfruit for me instead of the soy curls just to keep the calories and the fat down but I like to brown those in my scan pan so I don't know if that would work better for you because the scan pan's a lot easier to wash than those um, Crispy trays. Crispy cooker mats, yeah. Yeah, so, oh and did I also say, yeah I did say we don't use parchment paper on the well we did once oh and it caught on fire <laughs> well it didn't Almost. catch on fire it made us it, it, it made a smell yeah and it turned brown like it does in the oven but it was more of a smell and more brown than the oven does so we elected to not repeat that error mm -hmm. so i just don't make things in it that are gonna make a real mess because i don't want to clean that up and i'm not going to let it stay in there and keep getting burned on and burned on and burned on more and more so, because, you know, I want it to be nice and clean. I don't want to be embarrassed when somebody's over and I open up my oven <laughs> to show them. I don't want it to be a mess in there. So, you know, the, like Tom said, the mushrooms are about the most moist thing that might make a mess that I cook in there. So, it's easier, though, to cook something wet like this using the milky crisp lid because then it's just going to drip inside that stainless steel liner and there isn't a heating element in that stainless steel liner that you're going to have to clean. You're just going to have the basket and you're going to have the stainless steel liner from your pressure cooker and those clean up as we all know so easily. So, you know, doing mushrooms or something more moist in that works really well. Oh, I'm going to take a breath. You're, you're, you're getting almost pretty well caught up. Am I getting caught up? So, um, you so, know, I, I, just calling out a few folks been on here for a bit. Sarah, first time visitor. Welcome, Sarah. Eight Plants says she likes your sweater top. 
Thank you. Um, it's ancient, but you know how you have some of those favorite things yeah. from years ago that you feel yeah. comfortable in? I, I love this. Yeah. Um, Sherry's here from Highland, California. Joanne from Davis, California. Oh, you're so close. We're in uh, Roseville. Uh, I saw earlier someone from Australia is here. Oh, Carol is here from Australia. Nice. Oh, Kathy from hometown Lincoln, Nebraska. Hello, Kathy oh, Brune. That's where, she that's was where just I'm there. from. Now I was just there. I was just in your hometown. Okay. So uh, do you want to, I'll grab the crisp lid. We'll just show them the crisp lid again. Okay. And then I think we're, I think yeah, we're Yeah, we're pretty well done. caught up. Um, and I'm going to, uh, this question came from Rhea Edmond. Uh, for those of you in Canada, uh, after a couple of, of technical issues with Amazon Canada, we do have our Amazon links mm -hmm. and our Amazon store open again. Um, and, and I'm going to be emailing her and then I'll post that in the description down here because you'll see there now we've got our amazon.com affiliate link and then there's also now an amazon.ca which doesn't mean california <laughs> amazon.ca is canada so um so we went to quite a bit of work to get that set up so that uh because access to things uh, I mean, we, we take it for granted how easy it is to get stuff here in the states we're so lucky well and especially in california the produce that we yeah. get and everything, you know, we just, everything is in abundance yeah. here. We are very fortunate. So anyway, we're trying to make availability of the ideas that we have to folks in Canada um, uh, easier to, to find. So, um, yeah, so, so look, look, look in the description later for that. We'll find out what Milty's doing for Canada. So, Oh, well, they do, you can get it on Amazon. I don't know about Canada, and but... I, and I think I have it listed on the Amazon Canada page. Okay. Now, and now bear in mind the Nutmeg Notebook, the $10 off does not apply to, to Amazon. anything Amazon is doing. That's only on our direct affiliate link with the factory, with the Milthy company. That's right. Um, so uh, let me scan back down, get back down here to the bottom. So for those of you who are new to our channel, be sure you go over to the blog because we have hundreds of recipes over there that we haven't made videos for yet. And so there's just a lot of resources there that you might find useful on your whole food plant-based journey. And we just love sharing uh, what, what we've learned to make it easy. Yes. Okay, I have a question here uh, from, uh, oh, Dorothy from Sacramento is here. Our, our current hometown is, is um, appreciating the channel. Well, thank you, Dorothy. Uh, thank Ju you for watching. Judy's asking about how we clean the heating element. Yeah. So, you know what? I take... Uh, so, when I was doing the potatoes this afternoon for today's show, one of the sweet potatoes oozed and it got some stuff on one of the elements. I'm taking everything out here. I don't know if you can see it or not. So there's just a little bit here that I didn't get off. And I used one of the, one of these Mr. Clean little L, these um, magic erasers. And so I just got it wet. And first I took a warm soapy um, dishcloth. You can see it right there, Tom. There's just a little we'll bit. Well, yeah, there's just barely visible a smudge. I can't hardly see it. I don't think anybody's gonna write you up for that. Okay, probably not. <laughs> So, um, so it dripped on there, and of course that was hot, and so it, by the time the potatoes were done, that was a chunk of black on there. So I took a hot soapy dish rag, and I you know, got, wiped it as good as I could, and then I got down to where I couldn't get any more off, and so I just got one of these magic erasers wet, and then I just scrubbed on that until it came off. And so that's how I was able to get it clean. Because if you don't get it off right away, then the next time you use the oven and it heats up, it's going to cook that on even more. So, so I, did, I did put um, a whole head of garlic in here one time. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I can just air fry that. And I didn't, 
I didn't cut it. I didn't peel it. I didn't put it in foil. It exploded. I and it exploded. Sorry. And it was on. It was like a, a holiday too, wasn't it? It was like it was either. It was the like, house smelled great. <laughs> it was like it was like Thanksgiving or Christmas or something, you guys. And we were preparing, and we were having company come over, and I had this explosion. Like we heard this big pop, and then I came over and I opened up the door, and the entire inside was covered with exploded garlic and the paper and oh it was the biggest mess ever like you would never know it looking at it now but it was a huge mess and the entire house smelled like garlic so lesson learned okay you, where did you hide the scan pen we have a question of what is a scan pen oh where did i hide it i can't see it oh so the scan pan is called that because they're made in scandinavia <laughs> And their claim to fame, wow. their claim to fame, and they come in a, a, a lot of varieties. We do have one that's similar to this one on our Amazon shop. It's five layers of metal with an iron layer in the middle between sandwich between stainless steel layers, so that there's a lot of heat. Um, and it's a ceramic heat transfer. Coating. And then in, instead of instead of a PFOA, PFE free whatever coating, it's ceramic, and it's a nice non-stick ceramic coating. So there's no worries about any kind of chemical reactions going on with this one. You still don't, you know, turn it on high with the burner necessarily. No, you use a, but, a medium to low heat yeah. underneath it. Yeah. And I use it, you know, I can uh, saute onions and mushrooms and vegetables without using, most of the time I don't even have to add water if I start out, you know, low enough so that they can just release their natural juices. And I can also brown veggie burgers in it. And I have a breakfast sausage recipe on the blog and I can brown those in it and not use a drop of oil. So, okay. so scan, S-C-A-N, scan pan. Yeah, and, and they come in a variety of models. So mm -hmm. do your internet research. Uh, and different price points too. Yeah. They have lower price points on up to higher price points yeah. so but everyone that i know that has the scan pans really likes the scan pans so i just have one but i love it and we use it so much i just leave it out on the stove top all the time because we wash it dry it put it back use it again so okay. we love it okay judy's asking about how you're cutting the zucchinis uh not sliced or diced i'd say these are chunks about one inch yeah so what i one did, inch to one and a half inch long i chunks. cut i just i i cut them in half and then i cut them again so i quartered them and then i cut those quarters into thirds and but and that's just you know that's just how i like to do it it's kind of fun to have a different shape other than just the rounds so that's what I do. The broccoli, I don't cut at all. The mushrooms, if they're, the, if they're bigger than these little guys, I'll cut them in half. But these were little, so I didn't need to cut them. And the Brussels sprouts, I always just cut in half. And that works really well for, for us. Okay, uh, DSN um, on the sweet potatoes. Yes. Uh, she's asking, do you bake the Japanese sweet potatoes in the regular oven first, or do you bake them completely in the air fryer from start to finish? No, you bake them first, however you bake potatoes. And I have a whole video all about how I bake potatoes. So 400 degrees, an hour and 20 minutes for the Japanese sweet potatoes and the Hana yam. Is that the Longer if they're, if they're really huge ones, because if you only bake them for like an hour, they just don't get sweet enough. They're dry. You have to bake them long enough that all those natural sugars and the juices come out in them and then they're really delicious. But check our one of our Tuesdays with Tammy. It yeah. was in July. Yeah, if you just go to the main channel, the Not Make Notebook um, channel on YouTube, uh, I believe it's Tuesday with Tammy, like number four, and the name of it's all about, it's all about potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm and so, these. and she covers, she covers a variety of potatoes and a variety of cooking methods and, and is doing show and tell through the whole video of, of, of the how I produce do it. we're doing. So yep, I show you, I tell you exactly yeah. And that how video I does do get it. used a lot for reference. It, it's, does. it gets a lot of, a lot of traffic. Yeah. So, um, so, and we love your guys' questions. If you have questions for us, you can leave them wait, in the, our time is, uh, our time is up. up. Yeah. And you can, <laughs> well, I was going to say if you have, you know, for future questions, so on our Facebook page, Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, 
you can leave us questions there. You can send us questions for ideas that you have for our Tuesdays with Tammy and Tom. You can send that to Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com and we will make a list of the questions that we get and try to answer them on air. We are getting so busy that we're no longer going to be able to answer every question that comes to us in email via email. But what we're trying to do is take the questions that we get most of, most common questions. Aggr aggregated, yeah. And we're address trying those. to address those on our Tuesdays with Tammy and Tom so that we can, you know, because believe it or not, if you have the question, probably somebody else has the same question because that's how these videos evolve is that, you know, just like the potato one, we were getting so many questions about how we bake potatoes that our daughter said, you guys just need to do cooking 101. Well, that's what inspired the, the air fryer thing is that yeah. we got it in, in just in the course of a few days, we got several uh, inquiries about use of the Breville and, and the crisp lid. So we thought, okay, this we Tuesday said, okay. we're going to talk about yeah. air fryers. So we thought, okay, a lot of people are looking, yeah. you know, and maybe you're thinking about asking for one for Christmas or you're thinking of giving one for a, a Christmas gift. Maybe that's why people all of a sudden have started asking about them, but, um, but that's what we do. So if you have a question, probably yeah. somebody Mike, else does too. Mike, Michael is asking about what our future plans are. His first time he asked that it was kind of open-ended, but now he's adding what is our plans for next Tuesday. We don't um, know yet. So <laughs> we, have, we usually, we have to get through today and then- <laughs> And then we, we set our sights on next week. And, and mm -hmm. usually what happens is we're inspired by you guys, by the questions that you ask or the emails that we get or the comments that we get on Instagram or Facebook. And so then we go, okay, there's a common theme going here. Maybe we should address this. So, so yeah, we don't know what we're doing yeah. next week yet. So if you're new to the channel, last week we did a video all about our holiday menu. So it's, you know, we use it for the menu for a lot of different holidays, not just Thanksgiving and Christmas, but we like it for Easter and Mother's Day and Father's Day. And so check that out, the one from yeah. last Tuesday. Yeah. One, one thing we might, might throw a, a little call out to you guys. We were talking about the merits of doing a, um, an Oprah style, our favorite kitchen things oh, yeah. kind of video. Uh, because we, we do, we're, you know, we're a little top heavy on a kitchen equipment because we do like to experiment and explore and then share our okay. discoveries. So we were thinking about, you know, we've got stuff stashed here and there and out in the garage. We thought, okay, well, we have all these fun things we do and not everything appeals to everyone, but mm -hmm. something, some one thing might appeal to mm -hmm. every one of you at mm -hmm. some point. So what do you think, make in the, in, in the comments below, um, we won't have time on the live comment, but in the comments below the video, uh, give us your thoughts on our favorite kitchen appliances video. It would be it well, potentially... gadgets. It wouldn't have to be appliances. It could just be gadgets because I love kitchen gadgets. Well, gadgets is one whole show, and then and then all of these things that plug in is another whole show. Well, that could be. We could do two shows. So anyway, what do you think of that? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I want to be informative without being overtly commercial. Um, you know, we're, again, Tammy said we're addressing questions that we're getting, so... The information you're getting is because it's been getting asked for. So yeah. anyway, let, give us your thoughts. Yeah. I'm Tom. That'd be fun. And I'm Tammy. And we, oh wait, we're not ready for that yet. If you haven't subscribed yet, <laughs> please subscribe to our you. channel and click like because when you click like, that helps our ratings here on YouTube. And also if you leave us a comment under the videos, that also helps our ratings with YouTube. And don't oh, yeah. just subscribe, but smash the, like, smash button. the yeah. like button, click on the bell, because when you click on that bell, that's how you start to get notifications every time we go live or whenever we publish a new video. And that was something that we you learned know, not too I, long another ago. Another piece on that too, with the, the pushing the like button, that causes YouTube to, to reach out further with this feed. And if people are curious about whole food plant-based or uh, you know what's going on with the planet or what's going on with animals, YouTube pushes that out a little bit further. And so those likes actually helps spread the whole food plant-based message mm -hmm. to the world actually. So, so we appreciate your efforts on that. Um, yeah, because then YouTube will recommend our video to someone who's watched other videos that are similar to ours. And that's how some of you new people are also coming to us. And if you like the video, 
please feel free to share it. Share it on social media. Share it on your favorite Facebook groups or your personal Facebook group because that way we can reach more people. That We've decided to make it our mission in our retirement to help promote this lifestyle because we know that if you don't figure out how to do the food easily and um, tastefully, that you're not going to stick with this for a lifetime. And we believe that this is the way we should all be eating. So we're on a mission to help people make it as easy as we can. So with that, so with I'm that, Tom. I'm Tammy. And we help you get healthy, healthy and stay, stay healthy, healthy one meal at a time. time. Bye Thanks bye. for watching, you guys. We'll see you next week.